All right, we're going to open up the uh, Water Sewer Commissioner's meeting, March 1st, 2022. Uh, President Colin here, Bob Solvent, Bob Josie. Um, it's uh, 6 15. Okay, Bob, you want to give us the uh, Systems Manager Water and Soil Reports? Which one are you going for? Sewer. Okay. So, the monthly sewer report. Uh, so, for February, we had 5.76 inches of rain. We had a flow of 7,063,186 gallons for an average of 252,557 a day. Uh, Senegro hauled 87,000 gallons away. We wasted 130,165 gallons for an average of 4,649 gallons per day. Used 587 gallons of alum. Used 413 kilowatt hours of electricity, and the river average was 1,375 cubic feet per second. <clears throat> Waiting for the annual laboratory equipment calibration proposal. That's about the only out of the ordinary thing that we're waiting on. Any questions on sewer? So other than I think Gilboa Street seems to seems to understand that we're trying to replace it soon. So <laughs> <laughs> Putting up a fight, isn't it? <laughs> one thing after another. It's, me, it's been going good with that for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now it seems to want to give me trouble every day. Uh, no. No, no, that's what Keith said. Replace soon. I said, not soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the February report for uh, the water. So the flow totals are for January. Just because of being on the first of the month, we don't have time to get all the numbers together. Uh, for January, we pumped 5,903,500 gallons for an average of 190,000 a day. Used 438 gallons of KOH, 210 gallons of batch chlorine solution. And we did sampling for CO SOCs and coliform. Uh, so the 56 Main Street, the routine sample tested positive for total coliform but negative for E. coli. We did three confirmation samples upstream, downstream, and the original, those were all clean. Uh, so the the problem with that sample site is it's an outside spigot, so we think it's probably more more so that it was a contaminated tap being outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, that's the, that's up near the highway highway building there. So but everything else came back good. Everything came back clean on the, on the repeats. So. Uh, into the monthly storage tank inspections, change the analyzer filter cartridges at primary. We didn't have any meters replaced. We did two final reads and. One new connection and meter installation. <clears throat> we did meter reading for the whole town. Um, the water operator is doing this continuing ed for its hoisting license. Uh, we did three storms and pod for two of them. Is anything out of the ordinary? What do we need to discuss? Yeah. So I had seven million gallons of storage coming in. Yep. Yeah. And we only pumped oh, six hundred thousand. So it's like. Well, the thing is, you're you're looking at January numbers for water and February numbers for sewer. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so if you go back to last month's sewer report, that would be more what you want to compare. But with the heavy rains and everything. Uh, that's what I'm, um, I'm running. A lot of I and I. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So that's one of the reasons that. But that's something we've been. We've been working. We're on. working on. Yeah. That's. Um, that's one of the big capital items that we've been working on is the I and I study. So. Um, <clears throat> that's part of you know we've had discussions on doing the upgrades going up North Street. Mm -hmm. um, in part of the North Street discussions, it's basically to replace all the sewer going up North Street. That'll, you know, up there is where we have a lot of I and I. It's we've had a lot of. Oh, issues you're talking about replacing that sewer line going up? Yeah, if we move forward with the project as um, has been discussed, we'll get into it a little more when we talk about capital items. But 
um, if we move forward, we're trying to increase the, you know, replace the water main going up there. There's discussions of replacing the water main, the water main, the sewer main, putting a storage tank up there, and trying to straighten up. Now what's on that? Of, Tran that's transite, right? It's a mix. We got cast, we got transite, we got ductile. It's no, I'm the uh, sewer. Oh, um, yeah, mostly AC. Mostly. Transite. Yeah. Question was that? Mm -hmm. oh, so on that. So, okay. All right, and go to the project updates. Uh, so, which we've got a couple. Um, I don't know yeah. how much we discussed at the. I was just trying to find one of the emails for the other one. <clears throat> so, we, you guys are aware that we went out to bid for the pipe um, for the projects that we got going on around here. Yeah. So we went out to bid for the pipe. Nobody could meet the deadlines because of all the de delays on on uh, shipping and materials and supply chain issues or whatever they're all claiming. Um, so we had to put it back out to bid and extend the dates out to try to get it, give, give them a little more time. But unfortunately, that put us, you know, another three to four weeks out before the supplier could order, which, again, extended their deadlines, which they can't meet the deadline. So... Um, they're in negotiations as to deliverable and as to the time frame. They can meet the first deadline for delivery, but the second two they're not sure on, so nobody will guarantee delivery by the dates that we had proposed to try to meet our commitments to the contractors down the road. So um, they're negotiating when they think they can get pipe and everything, so we still don't have the signed contract for the pipe, but... If they put the order in, they're not guaranteed. Yeah, none of the suppliers will guarantee. They'll guarantee like the first shipment. You know, that's the first twenty six hundred feet or so. So we got twenty six hundred, and then another twenty eight hundred, and another thirteen hundred. <clears throat> and that's just part of the project that we separated out to try to bid early on the pipe, just because we saw way ahead of time that the supply chain issues were going to be an issue. Because we haven't bid the projects out yet to be installed, and if we had waited until that point, mm -hmm. we wouldn't even have got any construction in this year. So, you know, luckily, we pulled it out and tried to bid that separately. Um, it's still going to stiff us a little bit on the other end because you know we pulled out a portion of it so we could get the building that's going up now supply water so that they can you know have construction water and get things moving. Um, but we pulled the sewer portion out and the northeast main section of water main uh, because we're trying to get another grant through EDA and we can't order anything or enter into any agreements or even go out to bid for anything until we find out if we're awarded that or not. Um, so that's kind of putting us behind the eight ball as well to move forward on these projects and try to meet deadlines. So, now What about the <clears throat> cost increase? I'm sure it's going to be... Mm -hmm. Else? They'll definitely be, yeah. They'll definitely be a price increase because just between the first bid and the second bid, mm -hmm. it went up twenty thousand yeah. dollars. So uh, there's definitely going to be a rise in price. And everything else going on. And mm -hmm. everything, yeah. That you know, trucking, just across the board, everything you can think of is, is being affected right now. And of course, with the the war in uh, Russia and yeah, that ain't gonna help Ukraine, all. that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna cause even more problems with all this. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, fuel surcharges will be coming back, I'm sure, and, you know, uh, we're just going to have to deal with that as it comes, I guess, but, again, that's going to cause issues with the, the supply, um, so we're, you know, back and forth all day, pretty much every day, um, just trying to get the timing out, trying to hurry up and get the bids out, but trying to get the bids out without knowing, you know, if we've got the permit for the DOT permit, um, we don't really want to open any bids if we don't have the permit in hand. So we're trying to get all the timing in place as to what our requirements for whoever wins the bid to do the installation will meet for deadlines. But we're trying to tie deadlines with them, but they can't <laughs> install what we're supplying if we don't have, have a date for when we can get it supplied. So it's it's a little... Now the first round of piping, it'll go from... 
from the uh, shell station the, from the shell station to the other side of 146. We got piping for that or not? We don't have any pipe right now, but <clears throat> as guarantee that one. As part of the the bidding, they said they could meet the first deadline to get us that first set of pipe. The second one is this other section, which is kind of the bottleneck, so they don't have any fire flows if we don't complete mm -hmm. these other two. You know, this one will give us some, you know, from north to the beginning of the mill. We need to get, that's that's the big bottleneck, so that'll increase the fire flow tremendously, mm -hmm. but it still won't get us well, to where we need to be without doing this one. Yeah. <clears throat> so, progress progression-wise, you know, there, there, there would be best. Um, you know, when I was looking at it, trying to figure it out, it seems like, you know, do the first section and then North Street might be a better second section. It's shorter, but will take longer time because mm -hmm. there's a lot more connections and a lot more work involved. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a rougher road to work on. That's a nice straight shot down there with only, you know, half a dozen houses yeah. that we got to worry about for the majority of it. So... Uh, they can get a lot done quick over here as opposed to over here. Um, and timing-wise, you know, this road where they'll be working, it's not, you know, we won't have a high water table over here. Over there we'll probably have a high water table, so it'll be, you know, August time would probably be better doing this installation than from, that installation from, from north, north to, from north yeah, to the yeah. mill parking lot, yeah. So timing-wise, it's, you know, just trying to juggle things around, but it's really all going to be dictated on what mm -hmm. pipe we can get. Um, you know, I was talking to one of the suppliers today that said, you know... Now, is that a 12-inch main or a 10-inch? It's all going to be 12. All 12. Well, that's, all the way. that's 16, right. and then the rest will be 12, yeah. and okay. the one in the northeast <clears throat> will be 12. <clears throat> How many would you get quite a few bids on the pipe? Five, I think. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, not bad considering that. Because, well, you're, it's different than when you would normally see a bid because normally you're bidding furnish and install, mm -hmm. so you'll get 30 contractors coming in and bid on it. But where we were just bidding the material alone, there's only so many pipe suppliers oh, around, right, so yeah. um, it was a good turnout for what we had. A couple that didn't bid, I knew they would not be the cheapest, nor could they provide it in the time that we would need. They're just not that big enough to. Yeah, they're just not that size. So. Any of the supplies we usually use? Yeah, the lowest bidder was the one that we always use. So, okay. So that worked out well. Um, that's our main supplier that we use for everything. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was happy to see that. But um, they did get bought by a bigger company though. So they did. Yeah, oh. they got bought from a by a company out in California. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's supposed to be business as usual. They're just doing business under. It's still under that name, name, but it's a, a corporate. Yeah. It's like it's like uh, Andrews. Same thing with the Andrews Survey. Mm -hmm. They still want business Andrews Survey, but right. they got bought up by Dupree, mm. which is out there out of Newport, yeah. Boston. I don't say they're a bigger company. Yeah. I think a bigger company have a better shot again. Pipe. Well, we thought that, but no. probably one of the biggest pipe vendors around would be Ferguson and they still couldn't get us what we need. Really? It's just that that much of a supply issue. Um, you know, anyone that you talk to, you'd say, hey, can you find out if you can get pipe? They're like, they won't guarantee it. No one can no one can guarantee the pipe right now. There. Plus it's going to be made in USA too. Yeah. Which you would think would make it easier because, you know, you don't have supply chain issues. Right, yeah. It's not sit out in the harbor. You know? <laughs> Um, and all the pipes made from like our recycled cars and, and yeah, I know it. engine yeah. blocks and all it's that. Not as good as it used to be. So uh, yeah, that's the big hang up was the supply issue. Um, like I said, we we tried to mitigate as much as we could by jumping on it and getting ahead of it. Um, but I think there was it was just. Multiplying effects, you know, the supply chain issues, COVID, shortage of staff. And on top of that, you have the government infusing a bunch of money in, with the ARPA funds and everything into infrastructure. Right. So everybody's <clears throat> trying to do infrastructure projects right yeah. now. So and that's all the steel. Mm -hmm. And it's just everybody wants to do water and sewer because it's an 
it's kind of a no-brainer for ARPA funds mm -hmm. to be put towards water and sewer infrastructure right. upgrades. So everybody got money. You know, the ARPA funds didn't need to go to town meeting. They can just use them. So, um, like I said, everybody's doing projects. But you know, I laughed as I was talking to other other people doing water projects, and they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to go out to bid soon so we can get started in the spring. And I'm like, yeah, good luck. <laughs> so you're not doing that this spring. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, you get two miles of pipe to lay? Yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> you're about eight months behind on getting that out. So luckily we were a little bit ahead of it, apparently not far enough ahead of it, but it went quickly from, you know, before three days we could order the pipe and had it here hmm. you know and then it, you know when when i started hearing the supply issues they're like oh you know it's like four weeks out to get pipe and i'm like eh, all right that's fine with our schedule yeah. and then yeah. oh it's six to twelve it's, oh wait a minute now it's 12 to 14 really yeah now they're up to 25 weeks huh 25 weeks from when you order it so that's uh, crazy yeah i mean that's just unheard of it's that's never happened and in this industry for trying to get pipe uh, so we went with the lesser of the two evils and moved forward on the water project and we waited on the sewer project to try to go to the for the EDA funds for that uh, but now I'm hearing that the plastics getting into the same the same ballpark because oh, yeah. apparently there's a certain resin they use to make the plastic pipe and that resin is you know there's a shortage of that and they're using it for certain things and not the pipe so now it's going to get harder to get that too so mm -hmm. we'll see where that sticks us but you know we kind of weighed our options and uh, to get the sewer going we can supply sewer well it makes me a little nervous now with the stupid yobo pump station acting up but anyway all we needed to do was get the pipe from their project to that station and we could operate you know it it'd be work in that station but it more be construction type usage it's not like they're coming in full production right away so you won't see the volume immediately mm -hmm. but that would buy us enough time to get them hooked up and get them occupancy and then we can replace the pump station while it's in service you know and the other force main you know we can keep that one active and run the new one next to it so we could keep online so that delay isn't as bad mm -hmm. as the water pipe because we got to get in the water up front so now, new pump station is going in the same spot. Pretty much. It'll move a little bit. Yeah, so that one will stay there for now. Yeah, it's yeah. like going like right up next to that one. And then they'll demo that one once the new one's in and they switch over. <clears throat> so. Um, so let's see, that's that. What are we on? Project updates? Yeah. All right, so I don't know where, well... Actually, the next thing is the SRF, so that's outside of outside of the other capital items we're going to discuss. So those are specific. So, I wonder if this other project going to be coming up. The one in Douglas. The, they're going before the planning board this week, I think. Is it one's planning board meeting next week? The seventh or something. Tenth. Oh, so the other one will be up and done by before they start this one. Oh, uh, I don't know. No. Yeah, that. I think if they can get through the permitting process, they'll be breaking ground quickly. Um, I mean, they already wanted to be going, but they got held up with, you know, getting all the land issues and everything else mm -hmm. squared away first. So, what nights are planning on meeting? Yeah, I don't remember. Thursday. That's a tenth then. It's not Thursday. I just got a notice because I'm gonna butter to one of the projects. That's why I was thinking. I just read it tonight. I think it was a tenth. So one of the projects, so there's two of them that I know of. So there's the um, the one million or well, one point one million not, over here, and then yeah, there's not the commercial projects. Was a oh, just another yeah, oh. off of uh, the well mm -hmm. that housing with the old that's going Yeah, that's the other one that's on the same planning board meeting. Yeah, not, I don't want to go to that planning board meeting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Between that project and yeah. that project, that's yeah. going to be a nightmare. But. Because that one, that one spans two towns as well, right. so that's going to be another nightmare project up there. So not as bad as three towns, but yeah, no. So yeah. that's where we stand with those projects. I just saw the other day that's the new building going in up there. 
Douglas owns this little section. <laughs> yeah, it's the right? little, little, yeah, it's that little point in Douglas. That's that's the section of it's it, Douglas. There's one bathroom in there. Well, it's the only bathroom, so. Huh? Well, it's the only it's one the only for now, yeah. <laughs> that's why the water's going in there. We're supplying the water's going in the Douglas portion. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you got any more on the project updates or pretty well set? Uh, I'm trying to think of those are the exist. I was gonna say we've just got so many yeah. projects that are dancing around right now. So, um, but for now, yeah, that's that's it for the main. Project. It used to, yeah, the ones so, that are moving forward at this point, right? Yeah. Um, so then, right. next thing is the SRF project on Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, you know, with, with ARPA funds and grants going on and um, everything, kind of an influx, influx of money going towards infrastructure. Um, as I, I, you know, I've told you guys all this in the, in the past a million times. Anytime there's grants, they always distribute them through SRF. So if you don't have an SRF project in the works or approved or whatever, you're never eligible for a lot of that grant money. So, um, I tend to stay away from SRF just because I think it's a pain. Um, it's a low interest loan and we can typically get rates right now about the same and you don't have all the red tape and the hoops to jump through. When you do an SRF project, you're, you know, constant meetings and, you know, you gotta have... Yeah, it's more of a pain. Yeah, DEP representatives want to be in on the meetings, you have the contractor in, the engineers in, so you're paying a bunch of people to... Mm -hmm. sit around doing a lot of stuff that you know normally you move through with the project and not have all the red tape to jump through but now that's uh, the main that's running the water main from there all the way up to <coughs> so the way the way the project was written was it's from Franklin Street all the way to camp meeting on what was that south east thing south, 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 south west yes you get too many directional towns yeah, in this right room. Everybody says everybody does <laughs> like, all right, what direction? Yeah, right, southwest so, main. So southwest. So that's, you know, they, they replaced the main from camp meeting to the end yeah. mm -hmm. a number of years ago, but that's ductile iron pipe. So it still has the old cast pipe, which that section from the, I'll say from Webster Street to camp meeting, we had two breaks like 15 feet apart in two different years. Mm. Um so, you know, if we're going to do that whole project, I'd rather get at least that main strip done so everything's done and you got Yeah, right. how many millions was that you mentioned? Yeah, so <laughs> it was, I, th I think it came up to 7.5, somewhere around there. Just, for a ballpark million. number, we'll say 7.5. So it's 7.5, but it's from Franklin Street to Camp Meeting and then up Church Street and down Northwest Main. And it connects that that loop. So, because we're st we still have that gap in between that that hasn't gotten connected. So, we did that seven hundred feet or so on Northeast Main, but we did it with eight inch. Um, you know, they're the engineers are saying go twelve inch with everything, but um, I'm going to have them run hydraulic models to determine what the difference would be in flow if we had eight inch or twelve inch there. Um, I just don't want to see, you know, we put that in not too many years ago and then to rip it out and put 12 inch in. Yeah, you know, like that. You know, so if we leave that 700 feet and just have, you know, that'll decrease the cost of the project some and we'll start from where we ended and go down, you know, back down to the common. Um, so that'll decrease the project a little bit. But that was, like I said, re replacing all that water main around there too. So, um, when we did the uh, risk and resiliency assessment, that main seems to be our biggest risk. Uh, if we have a water main break on Main Street, we could, you know, if we have it, if we had a water main break on, you know, the, the highway side of Booster, that pipe breaks, the pressure drops because it's starting to flow on an open pipe, the pumps turn on. So we drain Church Street and Franklin Street both in, you know, by the time we get somebody in here to shut things off, we could be out of water for the entire town. Well, PIV should shut off. It's close it at that, right? 
it closes it from coming back this actually no the <clears throat> the way the PRV works is so actually it's it's either direction we would probably lose both tanks so if it breaks on the downtown side of, of booster mm -hmm. when it when the pressure drops on the downtown side the PRV opens and allows slow to come down okay that's so that's the opposite thing. right so a pressure reducing valve what it does is you're yeah. trying to reduce the pressure so it only stays, say, 80 on this side. Mm -hmm. Well, if you mm -hmm. drop this down below 80, this opens up to bring you back to 80. So this is the valve's going to open up and allow water to come from this side down to this side. And the other way, if we drop the pressure on the other side, yeah. our pumps work off of pressure and it tells what the tank level is. So when it sees a drop in pressure, the pumps say, oh, the tank's too low, we've got to turn on and run. So you're going to have two pumps kick on at 500 and something gallons a minute. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, while this one's draining this way, the pump's going to turn on and drain Franklin Street as well. Do we have a, is there, is there a manual valve at the corner of Glen? At the main? corner? Well, there's two mains coming can out you, of Glen. You, can you shut, basically, if, say, if something happened up by highway, you could shut that, you could shut that off and still feed Glen coming downtown, right? From those wells? Well, all the wells feed downtown. Yeah. All the wells feed Franklin so. Street, and then we pump from Franklin to Church. Right. So, so we, we can, can we can still, isolate can things, yes, but and, and it's a matter of how bad's the break, yeah. and how quickly can we get in to isolate things before that happens. So, yeah. we did put a mechanism in that we can, we'll get an alarm if we see a drop in pressure. Mm -hmm. So we'll get an alarm, and we can remotely shut booster off, so that it won't turn it on and and pump the tank empty. Mm -hmm. So at least then we're just flowing at gravity instead of you know boosted through mm -hmm. a pump. So we do have that ability, um, and then it's a matter of how quickly can we get in here and are the valves that we need to isolate operable and can we shut things down in order to do it. So you know, that's the biggest risk that we have draining the town, you know, completely. So <clears throat> um, and that that pipe is you know it was in the early fifties. Uh, cast iron pipe is rated for 60 to 80 years, you know, so we're at 70, yeah. 70 something years now. I th there's, um, no, there's no question, I think, that, that it has to be done. I'm just concerned about the timing and obviously the, the cost is the big thing. Yeah, the cost is the big thing. Yeah. And the all these other projects are big things. And right, and so. And I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable voting on something, especially seven million, half, seven and a half million, not knowing it. A full financial impact or a full financial evaluation to be done. Because that has to be paid back to seven and a half million. Yeah, it's a two percent loan. <clears throat> right. So it's a two percent loan. Um, the way it was written, I got to go through and make sure everything's right. But <clears throat> and as I discussed with you, the it depends on the poverty level. I know Douglas is not a in high I poverty think we're town. Poverty so level like more. No, but it, <clears throat> regardless of that, it's a minimum of six point six percent principal forgiveness. So. We'll say ten million dollars, so that'd be six hundred and sixty thousand, so five million would be three hundred and thirty thousand, so somewhere in between would be forgiven out of the principal. <clears throat> so essentially you're um, you're probably eliminating the, the interest based on, on those numbers. Um, and that's what they have set right now. So if any more if anything else comes out where they're distributing federal money for infrastructure, it would be through that SRF program. Um, so my recommendation would be to vote on it at town meeting because we have to have it voted on at town meeting. And I don't know how you want to word it to say that uh, we won't move forward until we vote on the funding source or how it's going to be paid for, whether it's ARPA funds, grant money, uh, rate payers, or a combination of any of those. I thought I was looking to see, I, had, I was looking through this earlier. Yeah, those. Just, just, what is that? I, know, I know that'll come up at some point as to why as far as certain projects. What, what, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't know why it wasn't anything plugged in. 
Um, well, this is just what Capital puts forward recommending. Mm -hmm. So I've gone before Capital several times with this project. So it's on, they have that on there. On the it should be in their meeting minutes or whatever, because I've gone multiple times, and you know, when they rate them, they pick however many based on their rating. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we have <clears throat> we have discussed it multiple times at their meeting. In fact, I had pointed out several years ago that that was more of a priority to me. That's what I, I, um, that's what I'm trying to figure out is because based on if they you read this, right? They're gonna say, well, why and, wasn't that switched around? Or right. And I did. I did bring that up, and I mean, I could probably go find where it was in that, in, in whichever meeting I had brought it up and told them that that is more of a concern to me. Mm -hmm. um, but that aside, when we were required by uh, EPA to do a risk and resiliency study, mm -hmm. part of that study identified that as being one of our higher risk spots. Yeah, yeah so, no doubt. I understand. Yeah, no doubt. <clears throat> right. So that just kind of being part of that risk and resiliency and that was, you know, that's one of the criteria for the SRF is if it was identified as a as a risk and resiliency issue within the town. Uh, so it gave us higher points, which all obviously uh, helped us secure the SRF because they didn't fund all the projects that were presented. So uh, they saw that it was, it was a higher priority than a lot of other projects that were presented to. Yeah, I, don't, I have no, no doubt that it's definitely it needs to be done. Yeah, so it's uh, an expensive project, and, and it is, given, but I can. Given the climate that with all the projects that's going on, and, I might, and the uncertainties of the projects moving before we get anything done, with the, especially with the materials and stuff like that. And the, the big thing on the financial side is, is that my concern <coughs> is I can't, I mean, in business you can speculate and you can take risk, but. With rate payers, you can't risk speculating, saying, "Well, we're going to receive this and we're going to go down." You don't receive revenues. The rate payers are responsible for that. It's the last to pay. So, if these projects move forward, which they're going to, they're going to be based on, on the numbers that they're projecting, it will be a, a, a good amount of money that will be coming in for that, which will essentially subsidize the rates or the, the regular rate payers. Right. But it's speculative. There's nothing saying that. I mean, that could, Something could go, and then two years it could be. You know, what happens if something started and you into a few years before something, something uh, takes place? Right. So, I, I'm not a fan of speculative with on, on the town. Right. You, you know, it's not any, it's, it's the, everyone else's money, it's the rate paid money, not our money or not an investor's or anything like that. So, yeah. It's my concern is I want to know what it's going to cost, what the, what the, the average impact on a home is going to be. And, and the rate payers are one, but the town meeting, I'm sure they want more detailed. I mean, it's a substantial amount of money. If you, if you break that down, and I, like I said, you, you, the formula you have, I yeah. understand that. But if you just broke it down simple, simple uh, math per unit, then it comes out, it's probably mm -hmm. you know, a seven and a half million. I mean, I don't think that that's what it's now. It's like 450 something a year. So it comes out to probably. I have to go back and check, but I want to say I thought it was, uh, it was almost 500 bucks a year per resident. Per resident on, yeah. on, that's doubling the water bill, 375. Right. That's on, yeah, that's on that would be on 5.5. Not only the rate for what he was paying. Well, I did 450,000 a year divided by 1,200 users. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. It's about 375 bucks a year. <clears throat> How many users with it? Twelve hundred. Yeah. Okay. I thought I did some math earlier, but it's close. But it's still a big, still a big number compared to that's that's doubling somebody's water bill, or yeah. tripling somebody's water bill. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Not only that, the ratepayers are going to hit, get hit, and the taxpayer, which the ratepayers are taxpayers too. Yeah. They get hit double. Well, it depends on how it's funded. <clears throat> How it's funded? Yeah, if it's paid totally by rate users, if it's paid by rate users and debt exclusion, if it's paid by debt exclusion, if it's paid by grant, you got to look at all the all the combinations thereof. Um, yeah, but I think this was, was we knew it was going to be, this was SRF, a 2% loan. Yep. 
the numbers are pretty straightforward, I think, on that. Well, no, I'm just saying Unless. it's an SRF loan, but you can still debt exclude. Oh, the town meeting, though. yes, do a debt right. exclusion so, versus yes. <clears throat> that's what I mean. It depends on how it's written, how, yeah. how you do it, and then it would also be dependent on... Well, debt exclusion would only be if it was going on the... If it, if tax it was, payers. If it was a split. Right, well, that's what he, he was yeah. saying. Yeah. He's saying that your rate payers and your rate payers are also taxpayers, so you get right. hit on both ends. Right. So that's only if there's a debt exclusion, Bob. So if it was strictly funded through the water sewer department, then it would be solely rate payers, no, no taxpayer. So you wouldn't get hit on the taxpayer side of it. Some of the projects that we've done before, like the main down Main Street. Main Street <clears throat> to the high school, that was a 2575 split. Right, so that was done to build the high school. Right. So that was a town specific project mm -hmm. that you needed to get it to. This is replacing something that you have existing. Right. So, like I said, it, there has to be more conversation on it, but um, I'm still going to put forth an article so that we have a placeholder. We can make a decision either before town meeting or on town meeting floor, whichever way. But if we don't approve it at town meeting in the spring, um, then we lose the option to take the SRF loan. <clears throat> it's like there's still... I mean, if you, we can still reapply, but it's also just a loan, so it's not like it's a great, if it was a, if it was a matching right. grant, it was just it was something, it was something right. that we're going to be losing a substantial amount of money, then I would say, okay, let's, let's really. Yeah, we could around. apply for this next year or yeah. year and, after. And I know the pipe is old, and, you know, I hate to say, you know, we, I mean, we've made it through, there's been a series of breaks, but. Yeah, we've had 12 breaks on that, man. Yeah. So. And an average safe and average breaks, say we say five to six thousand. It was twenty five thousand on the last one that we had. Which one was which one was that? That R H White had to come in to do right in front of mobile. How much was it? Twenty about twenty five. Oh yeah, that was the yeah, because of the whole thing there, yeah. But the the uh, it's a month I mean, just the monthly the monthly cost on it, the monthly payment was it's, it's substantial. Yep. I mean you could absorb on an average, say an average break is, is you know, anywhere between five or ten thousand yeah. for an average break. And uh, that's you could have three of those a year and still be less than yeah. what one month is gonna cost you. So I mean I know it needs to be done and we don't want breaks and do repairs. I know it's a it's an issue but my concern is the timing and the cost. That's the that's my big uh, issue on that. <coughs> But I know it definitely has to get done. Yep. So, and I will tell you that the price will only go up. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's not going to go down any more than it is now. That's the problem. <clears throat> although, again. although this time I think it may, I think stuff will. On the material side, it will come down. I don't think. I don't think that if these prices are not going to stay. Mm. I think when everything settles down a little bit. And Get the market can't sustain this. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like I said, I'll I'll put together more stuff on it. Um, you know, those are engineering estimate numbers. Um, other than the issues with supply chain and pipe prices and everything going up, um, typically projects come in under whatever the engineer's estimate is. Right. Um, and like I said, if you if you don't have a project with the SRF, if if in June, you know, the Biden administration says, all right, we want to put $100 billion in the water sewer up infrastructure grants to get these things done, if you don't have the SRF there, then you won't be eligible for those grants. <clears throat> so just to make you aware of that. And... You can approve it at town meeting and not move forward with it. You can go right up to the point that you put it out to bid. You get the bids in, and if they don't come in at a favorable number, <clears throat> well, then you can decline all the bids. Yeah. I mean, the other thing on this, too, is, is I think some of the outcomes we were looking at, we were told we were going to get a couple million well, that was, dollars that was supposed to go towards the outcomes. And it, is, that's, it is what sparked putting in this application and... Looking at this project was 
the talk that we had ARPA money and multiple departments within town agreed that that was a good project for the ARPA funds. So I still have to have discussions, you know, with... Uh, How much time do we have on this? Well, like I said, I want to I want to put the article forward. We can make a decision to pull it, you know, like I said, right at the town floor meeting or... Yeah, just pass over. Pass over or whatever, so... But I want to have the article on the town meeting to give us additional time because we just found out that we're, we're on the list to get it, what, two weeks ago, a week ago? Yeah. So... Is that going on the annual? That'll be on the annual, annual town, town meeting. Yeah. <clears throat> but we can pull it at any time. Yeah, and you when, can even. When is the annual town meeting? Did they have a date on that? Was it? Uh, it's always supposed to be the first in May, Monday right? in May, I think. Yeah. So after the to get the elections and then. We'll be yeah, I think it's in May, May, isn't it? Yeah. It's always in May. Yeah, I think it's the first first, the second. first Monday in yeah. May. I think is what yeah. it's supposed to be. Um, but you can. You can even approve it at town meeting and then not go forward with it. So it's right up until we sign a contract with whoever wins a bid on the project is when you need to make the determination. Or actually, I shouldn't say that. I should say that I think in the SRF there's a commitment date to commit to the project to sign off that year. Yeah, I was going to say. You're accepting the loan. I think it's in uh, the fall. So it would probably be end of October range of this year. So you have until that point to determine whether or not you want to move forward with it. And as, as far as grants go, uh, it doesn't have to be an SRF funded as long as it's funded at town meeting. So if, there's, if the project was approved, I thought that that would work. If you had an approved project shovel ready and, and it was at town meeting funded, no, that's, that, would be, that would be a matching grant or something that the state usually comes in. No, all the. I guess, I guess it depends on which grant you're going for, mm -hmm. but most of the grants that are issued through any of these, I'll say like these these infrastructure projects, mm -hmm. they're always issued through SRF. It's it's always done through SRF, and it's in the form of principal forgiveness. So you have it approved at SRF. You have the project ready, shovel ready, whatever you want to call it. Right. And, I, and then they say, all right, we're going to give grant money towards these projects. It's going to be a 40% principal forgiveness. So right. And this one, I think, was a 6.6%. Percent right now. Possible 6.6%. No, I think that's minimum. I think it's minimum 6.6 .6 if you're in... And depending on what level you are. Right. So, so it's 6.6, 9.9, and 18.9 or 19.9. Yeah. We're not going to be up at that. I know you're not going to be at that level. So it'll be the... Either the 6.6 .6 or 9.9, but it starts off at that. Mm -hmm. And depending on how many projects they fund, mm -hmm. so say they had $100 million that they were going to fund in projects. But like us, you know, we're on the list, that's 7.5. If we bail out of, this, out of that, mm -hmm. our 6.6% gets split up between all the ones that do move forward. Mm -hmm. So if half of those projects don't move forward, and they've got a certain percentage of grant money that's supposed to go towards the principal forgiveness, it gets split between the remaining projects. Mm -hmm. So they say minimum 6.6, .6, it could go up, up to depending on, like I said, if, if, if we don't move forward on our project, that frees up, six, what, on five, say 5 million would be 330,000 on, so say $400,000. That would be freed up to get split amongst the other projects that yeah. move forward. <clears throat> but that's always irritated me as well about the SRF stuff because they issue grants, they give you grants, and then they say, oh, you got to do it through SRF. It's like, well, I didn't put a project forward on SRF. It doesn't mean I don't need the grant money to do my project. Right. And, the, and the, the, the grant money that they've given you, that they're going to award you, is probably the cost of, of all the extra BS you got to go through that, to, and pay that you wouldn't have to if you didn't go through right. the SRF. So where are you? Back to, you're still back to square <clears> one. On the, yeah. And that's well, the way I always looked at it. Yeah. You know, I'd rather get the loan at the low interest that you can get now, and not go through all the hoops that you have to go through with an with an SRF. But um, like I said, this was this project was born through mm -hmm. in discussions with the ARPA funds, mm -hmm. and like I said, it was part of our um, for skin resiliency study that identified that as one of our yeah. higher risks. Yeah. So. 
Oh, I agree. No doubt, no doubt it should be done. It's just a matter of if it's done you know, five years from now or, or <coughs> in the next year. I'd like to, I personally would like to, I mean, obviously I've got to look at the full picture, but I would feel more comfortable getting these projects online, getting the revenue from the projects, get Coming a level play, more see, of an idea. Get, see where you are, get a little, get a little history, and then make, it, make an educated decision mm -hmm. based on that, that point. Because what, one of the things mm -hmm. that ups, is going to upset everybody, the taxpayers and the ratepayers are, are all hearing, okay, to get in the industry, your tax bills, I think in this, you know, the tax bills should go down because they're getting all this new revenue. And all the raw to sewer, they're going to get all those revenue. So our, our rates should drop, or they should stay maintained. Mm -hmm. So if they get all these, see all these projects coming in, and then they get their, their bill goes up 30%, they're going to be like, what the hell's going on? Right. So that's, that's the other thing that you need to look at, depending on how you want to fund it. Um, and one of the things that I was getting to was, you know, you say $375 per person. Because you're dividing it by 1,200 customers. I, I mean, I would have to look at the number. I ran. I, I'm just. We did the. I'm not saying. We did the 5.5, and I think the 7.5. I think is what. Right. So, based on the saying, it's 450,000 and 1,200 customers, 375 per customer. But, mm -hmm. you know, I don't feel that Betty Ann, who you know was living on fixed income and only using 800 cubic feet per year, should be paying the 375 when. The pot place is using, mm -hmm, right, right, you know, right. fifty thousand gallons a day. Yeah. So, I think it should be built into the rate structure, which is tiered. Mm -hmm. So you factor in your average use, and you put it. You know, if it's, if it's a three percent, if, you know, what's our budget? One one point two. So if we needed to add three hundred fifty thousand to that, <clears throat> it's a third or less. You know, twenty five percent. So you do a 25% on the rate as opposed to $375 per user. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. I, I think I would agree with that. But that's the that's the uh, the vulnerable part is you need history. You need you need usage history to support that. So we, to make a financial decision, we don't have any of that history yet All right. to, to make any of those decisions. That's that's what that's the where I'm hung up on. Yeah. If we knew if we had some history on year to year revenue, then it's a lot easier to make a make a decision. Like you, know, you can you can figure it right now and say it's going to be right. this X number of dollars. But the speculative, you know, speculation, when it's not, it's rate pay the money, not that money. We have, and we have to make a very, you know, educated decision mm -hmm. on that. And then, and ultimately the the town meeting will. Has to vote on so even grant money goes for SF, SRF? It depends on the grant. Okay. I mean, it depends on the source of the grant. But any grant that would apply to this, I mean, other than if you went for like an economic development or a mass works, but all of those type grants are tied to development. You know, you're increasing jobs, you're increasing tax base, you're um, you know, even if it was housing, right. something you can tie to, mm -hmm. but this doesn't tie to any of them. We're not increasing any capacity. We're not opening something up for development. We're not bringing water to somewhere that they can create a hundred jobs. Right. There's nothing that applies to that. So any grant that we got for something like this would most likely be distributed through SRF. But you know, that's what we're going for. For these projects, you know, we got a MassWorks grant for three million already. We're trying to get an EDA for three point three, so that's six point six out of the eight point five for this project. <coughs> we should really get uh, Bob and Eric working on this and tie it to the economic development. We already tried, <laughs> we already, we already tried that. Yeah, <laughs> he'll be all over it. <laughs> Chasing everybody now. Yeah, sometimes these grants aren't worth. I remember some projects that we done years ago in Douglas and they had the grants. It was cheaper to just sub it out and do it than get the grant money and jump through all right, the they tie they it. wanted. They tie it to so many different things, like right. Bob was saying earlier. So yeah, yeah like, it, like I said, I, it's, I think probably since I started here, you know, my first comments were I don't like going through SRF. I prefer not to. Mm. Um, 
Oh, you're like Colin said, you jump, through it. you jump through all these hoops and it, drives it, it often drives the cost up to the point of whatever you saved, you spent mm -hmm. in another way, that's all. Um, you know, because if we've got to pay an engineer and the contractor and everybody to come into these meetings, you know, every other week, you know, that's $500 an hour or whatever you got sitting around the table <laughs> to sit there to... To have a meeting to tell us what we already know is going on because we're out there doing it. So um, well, that's why like when we built the plant down here, there were more meetings you can shake a stick at. Well, I can know. imagine because you guys had uh, yeah, about bank bank RDA. Well, you had RDA money and mm. uh, I think you went SRF and RDA. Mm. So I get on right at the tail end when that was yeah when everything yeah that would was, be a nightmare. It was to go like the last time. year I think uh, when I got on it was like the last year of winding down it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. I wasn't too involved in the whole. I got. In the, I remember being involved in the when the contract went bankrupt, though. Yeah, yeah. That's when you. Came I can in imagine that must not have been fun. Yeah. <laughs> You're still in the I get myself into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was fun. We had to deal with the bonding company. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't want to pay. Yeah, trust me, I know, because you still didn't have half the stuff that yeah. should have been here to begin with. <laughs> All right, move on. All right, so the next one is the SRF project for the wastewater asset management plan. Mm -hmm. So that one's a little different. Um, this one, I, I see the benefit of going through SRF because it's it's a hundred and twenty five thousand six hundred dollar project. I'm doing these numbers off the top of my head, so I don't have them in front of me, so I'm guessing. Is that for the engineering? So this is well, it'll be an engineering firm coming in to do the plan. But what it is is. It's similar to what you did with the 20-year uh, water master plan. Um, so it's the we're doing the wastewater side, and they'll basically look at everything that we have. It's an asset management plan, so you're going to look at everything, all the pipes underground, manholes, mm -hmm. uh, pump stations, uh, treatment plant, and you gather all that data, and you look at the life expectancy, you know, when you, it, it's so that you can start planning your assets and when they need to be replaced. Um, so that project is, and, and it's something that we've actually, we called it the sewer master plan. For the money, I think you're looking at the. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll see. But I guess one, so, yeah, so I would have been off a little bit. I knew it was 25.3, but I was off on that. So, um, so yeah, it's 125. $126,500 for the whole project. Um, $75,900 is a grant. And then the remaining $50,600 is split between, I'll call it cash contribution, but it's we have to pay. Mm -hmm. We have to pay $25,300, and then we do in-kind services for $25,300. So essentially it's a $126,500 project that we're getting for twenty five thousand three hundred dollars yeah. and it's something that you know originally we had FST come in and give us a price to do a plan you know we originally said ah it's gonna be like forty thousand dollars and they, they came in and laughed and said oh well that, yeah. that, that'll down that'll get you started for the <laughs> yeah. to you know start the first phase of it um, right, yeah. yeah so then you know they I think they had said well you know for phase one you should really be budgeting around hundred twenty five thousand um, so they kind of wanted to, it would have dragged out a little bit. So, um, you know, we did, we, we're going a, a little bit smaller firm on this. Uh, so they can do the whole project for 126.5. So, um, yeah, the uh, cost is only 20, 20 right, 25. So that's the update and do all the saw. It's, it's basically to, like I said, it's an asset management plan. So you're you're identifying all your assets, kind of age, condition, um, and like the life expectancy. So you can you can plan out twenty years and say, all right, we know we need to replace this main at this point, and this needs to be done. And you know, the treatment plant's going to be obsolete in fifteen years. So start putting aside two hundred thousand dollars a year or whatever. That's that's yeah. the type of stuff that it will. It should generate. Uh, we'll see, also we'll see in the end. But. Master plan for going up Davis Street, too? Or? 
No, yeah, like I said, this is asset money. management. This isn't this isn't a master plan. This isn't okay. trying to identify everything in town. Um, as part of the asset management plan, you would identify everything you have, and then when you add something like Davis Street, you add it to your plan, and you know you put in all right. It was put in in 2024. You know, expected life is 50 years or whatever it is, and then you add that to part of your plan. I mean, once you once you have it established, it's kind of a living document, and you got to keep updating it and, and keep moving forward with it. But well, this is something we've been trying to do for years, anyways. Right, and that's what I mean. So we finally, it finally came up that we had an option opportunity to apply for it and get a grant. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it, I guess it worked out well that yeah. capital blew us off and we didn't move forward on right, it. Right. So, yeah. You know? <laughs> so, Something worked out. Yeah. So well. Well, that's good. Kind of goes to Colin's theory that you know, you keep blowing it up and don't do it, and you do bad, <laughs> then they give you money to reward well, you. In the, <laughs> in the state, in the, the way the state operates, if you yeah. look at if you look at the way if you do everything like you're supposed to and do it, do it, keep everything up to snuff, you get no state funds. Oh, you have nothing. You're yeah, right. So you got to run it into the ground and let everything fall apart. Yeah, and they'll come find everything. The point they say, oh yeah, they need a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. give, give them all kinds of give them all kinds right. of. I mean, I, I used to say that when we were talking about all these all these. Water line projects and sewer line projects. But I was always saying, just I think I, I understood the logic of you know, build it and they'll come, but I also understood there's a big expense that goes with that, right? Yeah, I yeah, knew that, I knew the timing is going to be critical on that, and then everything fell into place. And we got, we got all the grants we got. We got well, I can tell you, I'm not a, I'm not a build it and they'll come kind of guy, so yeah. when I see a potential, yeah, you know, that's, then, I, that, then I'm willing yeah, to, I'm willing to roll the dice a little bit on. Mm -hmm something that looks like a very promising potential which this looked like so yeah i agree and on top of 100%. that you had you had two potentials that look like very promising so it's like all right even if one doesn't move forward we got the other we got the other one to fall back on right. and, and so. the other and the the key part of that is you had a team that was good that took it to the finish line right mm -hmm. that was the that's a very you know you had bob and i can tell you it was bob and eric it was a tremendous amount of work that, <laughs> that went into to it to, to the finish line. If you don't have the people to take it to the finish line, it's not good. You spin in your wheels in the mud, and it just gets talked about. Mm -hmm. that yeah, because if you realized how much work goes into trying to get to that point, you'd be like, "Yeah, it ain't worth it." <laughs> yeah, but you know, in the end, it's an eight and a half million dollar project that we're into this. that we're trying not to put on ratepayers at all. So. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a huge benefit to the, the department, the town, and yep. all the ratepayers and taxpayers. So, yep. you know, well worth it. But I can tell you it's, and I can show you email chains with Bob and Eric and phone calls and texts at 2 or 3 in the morning. So, <laughs> yeah. so, I hate to see what his timesheet looks like, but. You know. <laughs> yeah, he's on pilot hours. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't cruise control, though, I can tell you that. <laughs> so, uh Anyway, that's where we stand with that one. So that that will be another article in town meeting. Yeah, that one. That, that, one's a yeah. that should be a no-brainer. Yep. Yep. Anybody votes against that, they're out of their mind. Mm -hmm. um, the budget. will just push that off. Yeah. Um, so there's really nothing that I mean, that's coming out of our budget. So that, anything that usually comes out of our, you know, that right, strictly out of just, our usually yeah. just goes right through. Yeah. Well, you say that, but I, you say that, but I can put the Main Street project on there, and we'll see how oh, yeah. that, that won't just yeah, go no, right through. No. Yeah. <laughs> That'll have some no. discussion. Yeah, that will have a lot of discussion because they they're wondering, they know that it's, it, the ratepayers can't fund that whole amount of money. Right? Yeah. Right, yeah. So they're gonna wonder what, what the taxpayers gonna have to pay. What's the cost of that gonna be? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll go through all that. So, I mean, I still like my idea hiring a crew to start. Jobs to replace water. Well, I mean, you know, we can get three times, three times as much done for the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, so capital items. I mean, we've already discussed the other yeah. two things that I'd put forth towards capital. Um, the only other thing is probably North Street. Um, I, that was actually on your yeah. on your list, so that's been on there for many years. That's why I wanted to do that too. Capital improvement update. I guess that's kind of the same as capital items and the other projects uh, and these that we're doing. Capital yeah. improvement for the FY22. How's the oh. um, generator still looking? Generators were still waiting. Um, 
So it was part of the more more part of the budget discussion. Yeah. So one of the items that we had on there was a portable generator. So that's on top of the two generators that we already have because those were technically the yeah. Y twenty one. Right. One's for primary, primary and one's for here. But we have a portable generator that would handle multiple locations. Um, the main one being booster station, which doesn't have a back backup generator. And the second part of that is turbine. And when we originally started this and we're moving forward with getting a portable, it also would have covered Gilboa Street that doesn't have a backup generator either. So we had three stations that it would work at. Um, we have a plug up at Colonial that it would also we could, so this four to five stations that we could use it at. Um, so that was that was in the 22? 22. So when I went to get prices for it, because I needed these two first, so I moved forward on these quicker. Actually, that was FY21, yeah. and it's a uh, encumbrance then. Yeah. So obviously that 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 went down the, down the tube there a little bit, but um, in the process of all that, I was getting the portable prices as well, and all the prices went through the roof. So we had budgeted 33, and I think the lowest I got out of the quotes was like 54. So the price went way up. Um, even on the generators that we already ordered and have contracts for, they sent us a letter saying, look, you know, the, the manufacturer sent us a letter saying that all the generators we currently have already on order, is the price is going up, regardless of what they were told when they ordered it. And they were trying to pass it on. I said, well, you know, we have a contract. And, you know, this is, I wish I could help you out, but you know, we signed a contract with you, and you know, my finance director won't approve it. It was approved at town meeting, funding, crossing. <laughs> we might be three fiscal years by the time we get the generator. So um, they didn't say they were going to cancel the order. Um, they did say that the manufacturer told them that if they didn't pay the increase, that they were going to cancel the order on them. But you know, that's up to them, and they're their customer service as to whether you know they, they whatever they do with that but, uh, but there's been a bunch of pipe price hikes uh, so I guess we gotta so it would just be it would be the difference of 33 to 54 in the FY 23 budget right so I got well I gotta look at that and you know we gotta kind of make a decision as to do I Squash the 33 in the FY22 budget. Let it go back to retained earnings. And encumber it and add the difference. So I got to figure that out. If I can encumber 33 and utilize it with a portion out of 33 and a portion out of, out of 20. That's a G. So I got to talk to Gene about that. Yeah. So I'll talk to Gene and ask her what route I need to go on that. So I just need to figure that out. Yeah. Um, but obviously I can't order it this fiscal year, so I just got to... Yeah, because then if it didn't... But we can't come to the money. Well, there's two, two options. Two options. Either I see, I see, we go to a special the, town meeting... Yeah, see what the cleanest is. To, to right, so yeah. we either go to a special town meeting and allocate more money to buy it within the FY22 budget, or we squash it from the 22 budget and move it to the 23, 23. budget. Just let the, let the 33, 33 roll back, roll back into retained down. earnings and do it that way, so... I'll talk to Gene, and we're going to have a budget. Easiest. We're going to have a budget meeting in like two weeks or something. Yes. So we'll discuss that more at that meeting, so I can have a conversation with her. Uh, but that was that one. Sometimes we think things are you know, <coughs> too well. It's easy, then you find out. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to jump through three right. rings of fire juggling. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it seemed easy yeah. enough. All you have to do is this. <laughs> Yeah, it's wasn't very easy. Yeah, yeah. 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 moving this one over to there. Yeah, yeah. one up and ask Gene, can I have that thirty-three cash so I can use it for next year? <laughs> um, so one of the other capital projects on there was uh, the filters. So when we took the filters down to replace the filters themselves, that was on the twenty-two. That's what yeah. Uh, there was some on the twenty. That was twenty one. Twenty one, yeah. Yeah. So twenty one was the it was twenty five thousand for the filter. Well, when we took the filter down, 
Yeah, that was FY21, but it didn't get done until 22. On the sewer? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, let's see. We well, got 20 and 21. Yeah, this is the. Uh, this, this is this line, and that that was added to this line. These ones are added to. Yeah, there it was. That's a total that was not included in, in that one. So I'd say additional additional money for projects. Like that was 41,000, 50,000, 25,000. Yeah, I'm just confused as to whether yeah. or not you had. Do you have these numbers wrong? Uh, no, these numbers are correct. Coming down to the total. <clears throat> like, I'm thinking this is. This is 22, not 21, and this is 21, not 20. <clears throat> we're actually. We're budgeting right now for FY23. Right, 23. So I'm assuming this is 21 and that's 22. 22. <clears throat> no, this was 21 so, and 20. I didn't have the, I didn't have a spreadsheet done on on uh, 22, but I was the concern on the filters. What we were looking at if it was done in 21, because I know we, I knew we had discussion of filters. Yeah. And then, but I, that was going to be if that was encumbered, or do we do them and then with the additional ones in 22? So we we did the filters. But when we're yeah. doing the filter, <clears throat> part of the filter vessel was rotted away inside the tank. Mm -hmm. But those tanks are always filled with wastewater, so you don't know that until you take it down. Yeah. <clears throat> um, which baffles me a little bit because the parts that rotted were part of the backwash. And you would think that with the part that rotted out, it wouldn't backwash, which means your filter would blind and you would... I would anticipate if the filter backwash wasn't working, which it couldn't with the pipe busted apart the way it was and rotted, um, it would have blinded the filters within a day or two, and you would have found it very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but that never happened, yeah. so I'm not sure how it didn't happen. <clears throat> but anyway, when we took it down, there was a lot of stuff that needed to be repaired, and the prices we're getting on that is... Uh, there's two portions. One is doing all the metal fab work that needs to be done, and the other part is stripping and coating. So they're both around twenty-five each. So it's about fifty thousand dollars per vessel. So we need to do one of them. Um, so I've got to figure out how I'm going to handle that right now. How many filters? How many filters? There's two filters. Two. Yeah, so that would that makes sense. I'm just thinking, okay, there's two filters, twenty-five thousand. So the twenty-five thousand was to replace the filter media itself. Okay, so that wasn't <clears throat> had nothing to do with what you had. Correct. About. This was something that was identified when we took yeah, it down to do that, and it's like, right. uh oh. <clears throat> so the filters have been done. Those ones are right. Done. Those are done. So the filter part is done. Okay. Um, but like I said, now we have yeah, to that. rehab the part that the filter's in. Yeah, I think you were talking talk about that before. Was I did the, bring. Was that, that the crazy angle pipe or something? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's on an angle, grand, and a pipe yeah. comes through a wall yeah. on an angle, and it's yeah. welded, and it's just the yeah. retard. Twenty so. grand to do that? It's, it's like twenty-five to, because they have to, in, because it's in wastewater for one, and because it's always submerged in wastewater. The coating that you have to put on it to make it last. I mean, all the people that came and looked at it to give me proposals said, holy cow, this is in great shape for something that was in wastewater for 15 years or whatever it is. And I'm like, I can't believe you got this long out of it. But yeah. um, <clears throat> but that, you have to get it down to uh, bare white metal. So they have to come in with like a garnet or something and, and sandblast everything down to that. And then they got... It's a multi-step epoxy coating that they put on it so that it'll, it'll withstand that environment. <clears throat> so it's not like it's not like taking sandpaper and sanding something down and right. you know, spraying it with Rust-Oleum. It's, it's a, it's a, a high-quality uh, epoxy coating that they put on so it. So that was identified, and that was in... Is that gonna, was that identified for the FY22 budget? Or the, the no, that would be for 23. 23. So that's that's on the okay. 
that'll be you yeah. know, discussed. And that, in that line item for the 24. Yes. So that's so that'll be twenty three and potentially twenty four because I can only have one filter down at a time. So mm -hmm. we've got the filters for both, so that won't be an issue. It's we'll have to you know we have one down right now so that it's dried out and we can get it ready to go through this rehab part. Um, once we get this one done, we'll put this one online and take the other one offline. So between you, so how would yeah twenty three twenty four right. Yeah. How long does it take to do that? Um, I would anticipate about a week. Oh. <clears throat> but, you know, just with the environment you're in and the way they have to do it, I mean, it, it gets expensive because they have to kind of encapsulate the thing and they're working inside with it sealed all in with a tent and air handlers to pull, you know, all the dust and stuff while you're sandblasting. And then, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen those filters, but they're like nine or ten feet tall. There's no way to get them in or out of the building. <clears throat> you got to go up to a ladder and then you got to climb down inside this thing. Um, it's just not an easy area to work in, and there's all kinds of angles. And we still got to figure out how to get the the filter drum itself that the filters mount to out of there because it's a giant stainless steel um, like octagon type thing. So, but we have no. They didn't set the building up to, you know, there's no I-beam or anything to pull oh. these parts out. So, you know, we're trying to come up with some way to get it out of there, you know, without paying contractors because that'll be another yeah. 10 grand mm -hmm. to get somebody to pull that stuff out. So we've got so most of it stripped down. In this year's budget for 2023 and then, you know, the next year. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So the, the pilot study... Um, that was budgeted for this year. We have signed the contract with them. Um, we were waiting on them, but after we identified this, you know, that pilot study was supposed to be, one filter was going to be set with 10 micron filters, the other was going to be set with 5 micron filters, they were going to come do the pilot study kind of in real time instead of mm -hmm. a small pilot where they take a portion and they run it through a small similar type thing. Um, they could do it live and we know exact results. Um, but with one filter being down now, I can't do the pilot study until the rehab is done on that vessel. Once the rehab's done, we put the filter back together, put them both online, we can we can yeah. finish with the pilot study. So we've already funded that, and we'll encumber it. Um, and then as soon as the filter's done, I'll get them moving forward on that. Um, and all this was, you know, we kind of had some foresight that we knew we were going to get an aluminum limit, and that was why we were doing the pilot study to try to determine where we would get with that. Well, we did just receive the new permit for the wastewater. Um, is, that the, is that the FY22? Or is it the one you just did? This is 21-22. So this is okay, the right, existing yeah. stuff that you have, but you have okay, 20 yeah. and 21 written. Yeah, I have the two folders. So I thought I just wanted to see if that was on the plan that was in there or not. <clears throat> I, that, I, I would just want to try to follow along with you when you were doing that. Yeah, so the, the pilot study... Um, like I said, that's got to, I've got to push them off until we get that filter rehab so that we can do the accurate pilot study. Um, so anyway, with the permit, um, we did get some new limits. Uh, you know, I, as you guys know, I've been, and you, you were in some of the meetings with EPA and DEP for the, uh, permit negotiations and stuff and, some of the things that were discussed and uh, ways to try to deal with the issues with the river flow and the mm -hmm. 7Q10 um, based on the dilutions. Um, so we did get the number reduced from 16 CFS down to 7 point something. I don't think I actually have to. Yeah, we were very fortunate, we were saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, we made out. They were talking about giving us a split permit, weren't they? Well, they were, they had multiple different angles that I didn't think of. You know, they were, they were talking about adding the uh, White and Watershed District to, to the permit as them being a co-permittee. 
Um, so that would, you know, they said that would put them on the hook if they're not discharging what they should be to maintain the 16 CFS in the river, that, um, you know, that would tie them to the permit and require them to, uh, Sorry, I to make that flow from 16 to 7. 7 something, yeah, I'm going to try to find We should be that. all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, that was a, a tremendous win on our part, I believe. Um, so we did get an aluminum limit, and I think in the past I told you guys I knew. I knew based on all the other permits that I looked at and reviewed, um, we would very likely get a an aluminum limit. Oh, so they hit us the aluminum? We did get an aluminum limit, but... You know, based on all the ones that I saw and was reviewing um, as they come out, it looked like everybody was getting like an 80 micrograms per liter limit. Uh, we ended up with 146.8, which surprised me, but I was happy to see. Mm. <clears throat> That's good. Um, so luckily we got the, the filter done that we did. We did put the 5 micron on instead of the 10. Um, so we're hovering just under that. So currently we're pretty much in compliance. Um, you know, like I said, it'd be nice to get the other filter online and do the pilot study because we, I know we can switch to a different chemical. They got a, a poly aluminum chloride 2400 that would probably clean it up even better than we're getting with the alum. Um, the alum's cheap and you use a lot of it to, to get those results, but. So our current limit, a current, what are we currently running at? Um, the last one was just over a hundred. And what do we need to be? under 146.8. Oh, so we're good. So we're, so we're yeah, we're meeting it. Um, I don't, we, we were exceeding that at times with the 10 micron filters. Mm -hmm. um, but so far, all the results that we've had since we put these filters on were under that number. So oh, good. <clears throat> it was one of the changes that I had said before, which yeah, is why we were yeah. doing it. <clears throat> uh, just anticipating. So, like I said, I was anticipating an 80 limit which we wouldn't be meeting which is why the pilot study was we were trying to get ahead of it we were initiating that so that we could come up with the numbers to meet that limit um, but luckily we came in they gave us a higher limit which works out great um, so we the benefits are they lowered the 7q10 that we need to meet For some reason, can't find it here, but there's multiple things to this permit. So yeah. they changed the way they did it. It used to be, um, it used to be a, a EPA issued the permits and Mass DEP issued them a combined permit with EPA and Mass DEP. Uh, I want to say three, maybe four years ago, DEP went and solicited to try to get EPA to give them primacy. Because there's only four states in the United States that are controlled by EPA. Mass is one, New Hampshire's one, and the other two are out southwest. Um, so Mass was trying to get primacy over the wastewater like they do with the water. Um, EPA said no. And then shortly after that is when I got notification from EPA saying that we're no longer issuing joint <coughs> permits with DEP. Sure. So DEP can do their own thing. We're issuing our permits ourselves. So... <clears throat> um, so they issued the permit through EPA as opposed to combined with DEP. Um, DEP still sent out a thing and we had to file paperwork with them um, and they're in agreement with this this permit style. So uh, currently that's good. So we, we got a better limit than I thought with the aluminum. Um, we don't have to sample the orthophosphate anymore. So that's one less test we have to do. But we do have to now sample the PFOS in the wastewater. So, mm -hmm. so they gave us a, a, a sampling requirement, but they don't actually have an approved method to test it yet. <laughs> so it's in our permit that we have to test for it, but they don't have a way to test it yet. <laughs> <clears throat> so the way it was written is, you know, we're... For the horses, isn't it? Yeah, so we're required to sample it in the... the Wastewater coming in, the wastewater going out, and the sludge going out. So once a quarter. Um, the test is not cheap. It's about a thousand bucks a piece. Yeah. So there's 
three different tests four times a year that we have to run. So it's you know, twelve thousand dollars that just in testing, just right. in this one test that we have to do. Um, but again, four grand just to do the testing. Well, it's a thousand per test, and we have three tests that we have to do. So three thousand four times a year is twelve thousand. So. Sure. <clears throat> and they actually, when I was discussing it with Janet uh, at EPA, she had said, oh, okay, so we're, we're, you know, we're going over stuff beforehand. And she's like, so in the permit we're issuing, it's going to be, uh, you know, once a month testing for PFAS. I'm like, whoa, I'm glad you talked to me about that because I got to readjust my budget. She's like, well, well, it can't be that much. I'm, I'm like, it's about a thousand bucks a test. You know, that's, you want me to do three, that's. Thirty-six thousand dollars a year. You know, a year. Just she's like, oh, I didn't realize it was that expensive. Let me let me go talk to people. So apparently, she went and talked to the higher ups, and they settled with quarterly as opposed to mm -hmm. monthly. I was like, holy cow, that's going to get expensive. Mm. So, <laughs> um, you know that that test alone would have been probably more than we spend on all the lab work for the year, <clears throat> just for that one single test. So that's crazy. Yeah, so luckily they... Uh, I think that whole PFAS thing's going to explode. Yeah. It once is. They start, once they really start getting into it and getting more testing and more testing. Mm. It is everywhere. And the thing is, is, and I mean, luckily, we came back good on our yeah. numbers. So yeah, our second round, I don't know if I told you guys, we got the second round back, mm -hmm. and I came back, I think, even better than the first round. So that's good. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, and it's one of the things that nobody understood first was... You know, they're, they're monitoring all the drinking water, and they're like, oh, my God, you know, they put all these, you know, really stringent limits on it in the drinking water. And one of the first trainings that I went to on it, you know, they had all the people, and they were discussing it all. And somebody had asked about the backwash water off of the, the treatment process, and, you know, they were like, well, you know, you have to be connected to a town sewer because you can't backwash into your field because then it's just going to go back in the ground. It never goes away, and you'll just you know, keep Just treating it. it. So yeah. I'm like, hey, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. I said, uh, you know, why are you sending it to a, P to, you know, a, a POTW? They're like, well, it's a wastewater treatment plant. I said, none of the treatment plants are designed to take this stuff out. I said, so all you're doing is sending it to us to for us to send it down the river. So now we got a plume of PFOS going down the river. I'm like, well, we didn't think of that. I'm like, yeah, yeah well... Jesus. In five years from now, you're going to be bagging us on the other end, saying that we yeah, we, we contaminated the whole river all the way to the Narragansett Bay. Yeah. But um, so I'm I'm assuming that's where they. Oh well, yeah. I suppose if it's in the drinking water and you don't get rid of it, it's all going out of the wastewater. So mm -hmm. that'll be the next issue: is all the places that hit high on PFAS in the drinking water, it's going to be high in the wastewater the as wastewater, well because yeah. it doesn't go away. So. So how do you how do you filter that? What do they do with it? PFOS? Yeah. It's um, used like a granule activated carbon. So it's basically a carbon filter. It's an ion exchange. So you can use a resin for an ion exchange or the granular activated carbon. Um, so there is a way that they can you can extract it. You can it filter in. it, but now you're filtering. When you do it with granular activated carbon, it basically binds to the carbon, and now you concentrate it. So what do you do with it after, you, after right. that? So now it's hazardous waste that yeah. you got to dispose of. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And the PFOS doesn't break down until you get to a thousand degrees centigrade. So you got to get it up that hot in order to break the bond in the uh, in the in the, in the carbon, the com the carbon yeah. phosphate compound. So, um, so anyway, none of the incineration yeah. processes do that. Mm -hmm. And back when I first heard this coming out, I had called. The company that we incinerate through and I'm like hey what do you what is your process incinerate to she's like oh yeah it doesn't incinerate PFOS if that's what you're calling it I'm like yeah that's <laughs> yeah, we knew so, so, so she already she already knew about it and yeah. she's like yeah we go to a thousand degrees Fahrenheit not a thousand degrees centigrade so <laughs> so I guess that was a big uh oh what's going to happen yeah. now so yeah. um, and they're doing they're doing Air quality testing for that now too. Yeah, it's, really, yeah. it's it's yeah they're testing everywhere and everything. Yeah, I was reading up on <clears> some <throat> of that stuff. I mean, I don't understand any of the stuff that he just talked about, but I just understand the you know the, the yeah the, the basics of the. And we test for six. Yeah. 
So we test for six compounds that are of PFOS, but there's like over 9,000 different compounds. Really? That are PFOS compounds. But they, they picked the ones that they said were the most prevalent and most, um, you know, they got the longest, longest chain, carbon chain that is harder to break down. So it's got a really long shelf or half life. So that's what stays in your body longer. So they want to target the higher risk ones first. Um, but, and I don't know if I mentioned to you guys that we just got the notification that we fall under the UCMR five which is where they identified, UCMR4 identified these PFOS compounds that they, they pick randomly pick a, a certain number of systems to run all these tests that are, it's UCMR's unregulated contaminant monitoring. Um, so they pick a series of contaminants that they want to test and see, you know, get a, get a, a grasp of how many systems seem to be hitting on certain compounds. And those are the ones that they probably plan to future regulate. To get a baseline. <clears throat> right. To yeah. kind of get a, yeah, a feel. To get a, a 10,000 foot picture of, all right, yeah, we had issues all up in this area. Or, you know, hey, look, all the hot spots seem to be around Air Force bases or around mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. landfills or whatever. Um, so, unfortunately, we got picked to do the UCMR 6 or 5. So, But there's like another 27 of these PFOS compounds on it that we need to test for through that uh, that round, as well as uh, like another fifteen or twenty different compounds. But <clears throat> um, not offering the, the free sampling anymore. I know we had the, the uh, yeah. I did the first round free. First round, yeah. They came in. Yeah, no, I did the first round free, and then I sent a big long letter to him saying, "Hey, you know, I just did this sampling, and and you know, we're due to sample in October, but we did it early. Can we?" substitute our October samples for this and they allowed us to so okay. that saved us one round of, yeah. of testing that we had to do uh, but then we had to do our first round in January so yeah. good. good so we did our January so we've got two rounds so far that that came back good um, I think and then we get three more quarters to get uh, a full calendar year um, of sampling, and then I think if, as long as everything stays good, we can reduce our sampling to either one or two times a year instead of four. So, well, that'd be good. but anyway, that's where we stand with the. Uh, we do have a new permit; it'll be going into effect April first. So it's not in effect yet, but mm -hmm. based on all our numbers, and we did start taking some aluminum samples um, just to get ahead of it. <coughs> Um, so far we look pretty good with the new permit so that's good that's good um, like I said the the river flow concerned me the aluminum concerned me luckily it came back with a better number than we thought mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't actually anticipating the PFOS issue but luckily it's not in our drinking water which gives me hope that it's relatively low in our wastewater <clears throat> Um, all right, where were we? Anything else? I think there was a... <clears throat> open session. I don't have anything else. No, it's not, not the open session. Yeah. For anything, yeah, any reason we anticipated with the 48 hours? I have nothing. No, no, that wait, that's all I got. Oh, actually, the only thing I have is... Uh, what was the update on the job description? So I was about to say staffing is yeah. the only yeah. thing I was yeah. going to say, but oh yeah, um, I'm going to go talk to Matt. I mean, it's I had anticipated already having everything up so we could yeah. put it out. Yeah. Um, but short staffing, even more so than now. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, Threw another wrench I mean, in my plans because I got way too many projects going on to be taking on more job roles. But I mean, I know the last time we talked, we were just waiting. The town meeting was going to. Right. It was supposed to be town meeting. Get that done. Um, but given the fact we've already had it funded, it's in our budget. Right, so we have funding already in our budget. Yeah. Um, so some of Matt misunderstood when I first presented to him the different things, but uh, the last conversation I had with him was, well, if you already have the funding, then I can I can do something to move forward with it already. Yeah. Um, and then we, we can get it cleaned up and, yeah. and clarified at town meeting. But 
Um, that was not the direction I was originally given, but I don't know if maybe he didn't understand that we already had the positions funded. So, mm-hmm. um, well, there's moving forward. So there's a no, trust me, I don't want yeah. to move forward. <laughs> well, I was concerned about it. I'm, I'm thinking I've everything. Enough. April, everything's going to go. <laughs> Oh yeah, like blow wide open, and you know, you're gonna be running around it's with gonna get, your head cut off. It's gonna get very busy, more so than it already is. Um, so, with all these projects, so. Yeah. Uh, and that was the other thing that, uh, just I'll throw it out there while we're since that, that came up and just kind of triggered that thought. Um, that SRF for the main street, um, so we would have to apply for the loan or whatever in the fall, but construction or going out to bid probably wouldn't be until spring, and then knowing the delays on pipe and everything and issues with pipe supply we could probably push it off till you know 2024 maybe even 2025 to do the project so if it was 2024 it would be most likely 2025 budget that we would have to look for Mm -hmm. funding so that may give us the opportunity to establish some funding coming in from speculative speculative buildings right now so just want to yeah. throw that out there if you're if you're sitting there running through numbers and stuff, whatever you're thinking about and doing yeah. it. But okay. um, just one more thought for you. All right. Uh, make a motion to adjourn at 748. All right. Second. All in favor. All right. We're going to go. Um,